You can easily and quickly plant a lot of tomato plants in pretty small containers, but you will find yourself spending a lot of time potting these plants up to avoid overcrowding and leggy, spindly plants. A good way to avoid this is the use of party cups, and a good way to keep your plants evenly watered is by the use of the double cupping method. In this video, I will show you how to successfully use the double cupping method while avoiding some of the mistakes that I made the first time through. Hello, this is Stephen from ShortSeasonGarden.com and I offer tips and tricks for gardening in any climate, but especially for short seasons like here in Zone 3 in Eastern Canada. So subscribe to my channel, give my video a thumbs up and a comment, and check me out on social media on Instagram or Facebook at Short Season Garden. While most plants do not like their stems to be buried, tomatoes are one of the rare plants that enjoy being planted deeply and will actually develop new roots all along the buried stem that make the plant sturdier and stronger. Typically, tomato seedlings are started either individually in small cells or even with several too many plants in the same pot. As the plants grow, you repot or pot up the plants into larger containers putting the plant deep into the pot and carefully adding growing medium around the stem. While this method works fine, if life gets busy and you don't get the plants potted up in time, plants can get leggy and root bound. Also, as the plants get larger, they require more water and can dry out too quickly. All of this can be avoided using repurposed party cups, and the best way to water is using the double cupping method. All right, so we're going to show you how to do a double cupping method for planting tomatoes. There's different ways of planting tomatoes. You can plant them in these peat pellets. And the problem with the peat pellet, you can see that it's already needing repotted. And I'm going to have to pot these up in a few days. So instead of using peat pellets this time, I'm going to use this, these cups. And there's different ways to do it. You can just plant in one cup. But I'm going to use the double cupping method. So I'm going to put my tomato plant in the top cup. Um, I've got holes drilled in the bottom. And I'm going to put the water in the bottom cup. So we've got six kinds of tomatoes we're going to plant here today. We've got Cherokee purple, some seeds that I've bought, some sun gold, and I've got some Roma. And then I've saved some some mystery keeper that keeps well into the winter, some big brandy, I've got some brandy wine, and I've got some black creme. So it's important to have drainage holes. Uh, you can see the, the containers that you buy, they have pretty good drainage holes in them. Uh, so I've got a quarter inch bit, and I'm going to drill through a bunch of my cups at once. It's real easy to do them all at once. All right, so that made a hole through all of them. I'm going to do four holes. And there we go, we've got some drainage holes in the bottom. Okay, so we're going to start filling these uh, solo cups with potting soil, about two inches in the bottom of each. Actually, this isn't potting soil, it's starter mix. And we're going to fill them each about two inches. So we've got about two inches of mixture of uh, potting mix or starter mix, I guess, and uh, perlite in the bottom of each container. And and we're going to put some, I boiled my water and the reason is I did that first of all is because this potting mix is, starting mix has been around for a while and I'm afraid of fungus gnats and don't want fungus gnats in it. Uh, now the reason this is brown is because I was given a free sample of a product called Organic Rev which is supposed to help with root development so we're trying that out as well. I put a cap full or two per gallon of water. And so what we're going to do is fill these bottom cups that don't have the holes in them with about 
about half a cup of water. And then we're going to set the inner cup right inside the outer cup and let that water seep up into our soil. In hindsight, it would have been better to pre-moisten my planting mix. Although bottom watering is the ideal way to water your seedlings, it can take a very long time trying to get peat that is completely dried out to absorb water. I know this from past experience, but for some reason forgot how hydrophobic peat can be. I ended up getting impatient and pouring more water over the top. As a result, I ended up with way too much water and had to pour a bunch back into the pitcher, as you can see in this sped up video. It is important to have some space between the two party cups to allow for better drainage. To accomplish this, we put a small stone or pebble in each bottom cup. So we've got our soil all moistened. We got our pebbles down on the bottom to allow the water to drain. So now we're adding our tomato seeds. As you can see, a regular humidity dome doesn't work well over the party cups. Shrink wrap, however, works just fine. Now we put the newly seeded pots under our grow lights and wait. So I'm down here in my basement. Uh, but I've got these under the grow lights. There's one thing I did forget to do, I'm gonna do right now. I wanted to put a bit of a vermiculite over those tomato seeds to uh, not only cover them up, but to help ward off the dampness, uh, which can cause damp off. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of vermiculite over the top of these seeds. And again, that helps prevent damp off. When you are buying expensive tomato seeds, you are very careful to limit them to one per cup. I saved many of my own seeds, and I guess I must have been worried about germination because I got way too many seeds in some of the cups. It is important once the true leaves appear to thin any extra seedlings so there is only one in each cup. Now you can see why we only put two inches of growing medium in each cup. As the plants grow, we simply add potting soil around the stem. There is no need to pot up or repot the seedlings. To water the plants, simply add water to the bottom cup and let it seep up into the top cup. When the plants are small, be careful not to overwater and drown the plant. It is important to have small stones or something in the bottom cup to create a drainage space for the top cup. 
Some indoor gardeners will leave the plants in the cup long term and allow the roots to extend down into the bottom cup, simulating the Kratky method of hydroponic gardening. If we timed our planting right, about six to eight weeks before the average last frost date, by the time the seedlings are outgrowing their cups, it is time to set them in their final home in the garden, whether it is in a ground bed, a raised bed, a straw bale, or a self-watering container. Check out the above link for my popular self-wicking tub. I also have videos on straw bale gardening, raised bed preparation, and in ground beds as well. If you enjoyed this video, please punch the like button. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, click the notification bell, and we'll see you in the next video.